Today we're taking a look at a fiber laser engraver. This is the Monport GQ30. It's kind of their base model of the fiber lasers. Now they did send this out to me to use on the channel and they also provided a discount code and affiliate link down in the description. Um, so in full disclosure, that's the relationship there. It's made for engraving all sorts of metals. Now you could use it for functional projects. That's what I'm most interested in. Say you had a small fabrication shop or even a large factory, you could use it to put products branding on or serial numbers or barcodes things like that on the other hand you could use it for personalization and craft type businesses or just personal crafts and so we're going to try out some different blanks there as well as a variety of engineering materials now before that let me walk you through what it took to set it up because it wasn't completely trouble free for me now mechanically everything was really easy to get set up it comes with a fixture plate here and this is nice thick aluminum. It has rows of threaded holes and it comes with a couple of fixturing bars so you can repeat your setups over and over again. Now on top of that is this elevator uh, tower and it's a hand crank here being their base model. They have some with powered lift, but the hand crank turns smoothly. It's really well built. Everything is nice and solid here. So I was pretty happy with that. And then you can lock the height in place with this screw on the back. Now the laser head is mounted on slots so you can slide it forward and back and in and out to be able to position wherever you'd like over your fixture table here. Now there's a cable that comes off of this laser head, just a single uh, permanent cable that goes to the laser source and electronics. They're in a box here about the size of an old PC. And this has a lot of switches on it from what I can tell. They all do the same thing, but having a key switch is really not a bad idea when you're dealing with exposed lasers. And that's one of the important considerations with something like this is that this laser area is not enclosed. And so you need to wear special glasses and take precautions there as well as deal with any fumes that come off of here. It also includes a foot pedal, which is really nice. So you can just click this with your foot to engrave the next unit. In order for the laser to be in focus, the uh, lens has to be at the right height. And so it has these little guide lasers on pivots. You can set the head to the right height and then adjust these to all align with one another. That way when you move it up and down, you can see when they're all intersecting and you know that it's at the right focal height and it'll be in focus. Now let's talk a little bit about the software. This can run on EasyCAD, which they provide for free or you can run it with a third-party software, Lightburn. And I used both here in the tests today. I found the software installation to be kind of cumbersome. It comes with a USB drive and the directories in it are in Chinese, which I think was a bit of an oversight given that this was sold on the American market, but it wasn't too hard to figure out where they were. Now, this caused another problem because the directory paths couldn't, uh, wouldn't actually work unless I renamed them to be in English. So I did that and then it just opens out of the directory and it worked from there. Now, I also had to manually install the driver in the device manager, which took me right back to, you know, 20 years ago and we used to have to do this all the time. So I think that's a little bit outdated and I, I didn't find the instructions to be totally clear on that. But once I did, it worked really well. Now let's go ahead and import a vector file. So this is just a logo file here. I'll line up and then click the light button. And when I do this, it'll show the frame of where it's going to be. Now I can press mark and it's just that faster on the outline, super quick, but it's pretty faint. And so I'll add some cross hatching to it here. And you can see it's pretty intuitive and uh, easy to use, even though the interface does look quite outdated. So I'm gonna run most of these in real time for a little while, then speed them up. But uh, anyway, you can see that the red uh, alignment laser is just a little bit above the actual laser. That's because I was messing with the settings and, and there's an offset built in there. So, so that was me, that's not an issue with the machine. In fact, they had a configuration file that had already figured that out. But this is a result on stainless steel. This is a really light engrave. We'll do a darker one later with the material tests. Now you can also do some basic drawing here in EasyCAD, which I think would be nice if you're just putting on serial numbers or making high visibility sockets or whatnot to just do it right in the software that you run the laser with. And that way you don't have to go between this and a graphic design package. So I'll just run a little example here with a 
square and some text and uh, with the preview there's an option to actually show what it's going to engrave and I'm running this one on some titanium that I had and I'd say that turned out pretty nice. Now let's go ahead and try some different materials. We'll start off with some different engineering materials. We already looked at titanium. That worked really well, as well as a light engrave on stainless steel. Let's see if we can get a little bit darker engrave on some stainless steel. I've turned up my settings a little bit here on some stainless steel, so we'll get a little bit darker engrave, and it's gonna run multiple passes as well. Now this is in real time right now. I'll speed it up here in a second so it doesn't take all day. But uh, this engrave and all the rest of them that I'm doing today, I'm doing with light burn because I wanted to make sure that this really is compatible with it and I didn't have any issues at all. Now it is kind of a hassle because you have to switch drivers and uninstall the driver from EasyCAD to be able to use it with Lightburn. At least on my computer, I couldn't find a way around that. If you know some way around that to use both, please let me know in the comments. But uh, I think you kind of need to pick one or another because it's a bit of a hassle to switch between them. All right, let's go ahead and try out some aluminum and see what the engraving runs like on that. Once again, I'll go ahead and start off in real time. So this is the actual engraving speed. I could turn my resolution down a little bit. It's probably a denser line than it needs to be, but it gives me a nice crisp, clean look. So this is where I landed at. Now the fan on the power supply is a little bit loud. So I'll turn up the volume a little bit so you can hear that going. Overall, Still no issues. Once again, running light burn on this one. Okay, let's go ahead and try this out on some carbon steel here. Right now, this is what it looks like in real time. I could probably speed it up a little bit with a settings change, but it's just working really nicely. This is a pretty similar setting to what I ran on the stainless steel, and it's coming out nice and clean. Next, let's go ahead and try this out on a few different craft items. We're going to try out a slate coaster. We're going to try out an anodized aluminum dog tag, as well as a coated aluminum business card blank. Now, I just buy these slate coasters on Amazon, and I've done these before on different types of lasers, but never with a fiber laser. And so this is quite a bit faster than a CO2 or a gantry diode laser. And it's working really well. So far, this is all in real time, and it's getting a little bit of depth to it. We'll take a closer look at it after it finishes. Let me go ahead and speed this up so we can watch the rest of the process just a little bit faster and see it fill in all the way up along there. And I'm running a second pass here just to get a little bit more depth to my engraving. And this is kind of my first attempt at getting something deep. This is probably half a millimeter deep into there, if you can see that on the camera. You could probably make a little business out of just doing these, but uh, even if it wasn't your main use, you know, it's a pretty good gift item or promotional marketing item, something like that. I'm going to test this out on anodized aluminum using uh, these little dog tag blanks. And these can be pretty handy, but really there's all sorts of anodized aluminum that you might want to engrave. Now, my settings were a little bit low there, and I ran it twice. But uh, here with some higher settings, just a single pass that was real time, and it came out really clean. Next, I'm going to try a bitmap engrave. And so this is engraving in grayscale, and it, it's inverted, so the lighter the color the higher the intensity because these little aluminum cards, they're black coated aluminum business card blanks. And so you can make all sorts of cool stuff, but it's amazing how well they turn out. Now, because of the high resolution that I have set, it's taking a little while here. So I'll speed this up just to watch the rest of it. And my settings this time were just a little bit dark. And so I ran another one where I turned up the power just a little bit. And this turned out awesome. I mean, this is an incredible use uh, by itself. And once again, even if it wasn't your main use, maybe you want to make some special uh, business cards for some sort of promotion or something. Um, you could use it for, for all sorts of things like that. We ran a pretty good spread of materials here, and everything performed as expected. I mean, I'm really happy with the results that came out of the laser. There wasn't any mechanical fussing around that was needed. Um, once the software and drivers were installed, that all worked really well also, both with EasyCAD and Lightburn. I didn't have any errors or any weird glitches uh, there after the initial installation. So 
uh, pretty, pretty good results. Now, at the end of the day, what do I think about it? The hardware, I think, is really well built. Everything works well. It's really smooth. Um, the software, at least the installation process, I thought was a little bit clunky. I think they could do a better job with some of the documentation on how to install the drivers. But all in all, those issues weren't really that difficult to resolve. And once they were resolved, uh, it worked really well with the, the software that it provided both with the uh, EasyCAD and with Lightburn that I got separately. So um, if you're interested in something like this, be sure to check out the discount code in the description. It can save you a little bit of money. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.